Here is an introduction to the animation mixer. I'm going to set a positional key at frame 1. I'm going to go to frame 10 and put 10 units. Set another key. So now I have a little piece of animation. If I hit 0, that opens up the function curve editor and I can see there is my animation. I can make it linear. And we have the ability to store this as a clip. Currently the local positions are marked, so I'm going to store the marked parameters. So this is a reflection of whatever is down here. In addition, if I have multiple types of animated parameters, I would store the animated parameters. If I have scaling, rotation and translation, I would store the transformation function curves. I'll come back to these current values in a little bit. So if I now have a look here, store mark parameter function curves, I'm just going to call this up. It knows the frame boundaries from which I did, it's more than likely you'll want to be able to store that. We have the option to remove the original animation, which we will do. I'm just going to take the defaults then. So now when I scrub the timeline, I have no animation. If I open up the animation mixer, Alt-0 is the hotkey. I can insert the source, and there it is, there's the up motion defined as a clip. If I go back to frame 1 here, don't need this anymore, I'm going to do some other animation. Let's go to frame 10 again, in this case I'm going to do it in X. So now I have this animation like so. Again, I want to store that. Remember middle clicking it's going to bring up the last command asked for. In this case, I'm going to go call it right. I'll actually make the uh, default in at frame 1. And again, I'm going to remove the animation. I'm just going to up the animation editor. And with this selected, it actually, there are no nodes to show because it's currently being driven by the mixer. So if I open the mixer up and insert the source, we can have a look at right. If I select this source and hit update, there we go, we can now see the same animation but driven by the, the uh, mixer. If I open this up now, we can see the uh, right clip. So here it is the position in X, that's what we want to look at. Let's put this back to frame 1. If you see here in the top left, that is the current frame in the in and out. The bottom right is the original source data. You can see how the clip moves in the function curve editor as I move around. Now I actually keyframed it at frame 2. It doesn't really matter because I can go in here and just move it to frame 1. So what I'm doing is adjusting the source data, not the clip, it's the source data inside the clip. So I'm playing with the function curves, but I'm also playing with it as a clip in time. I can stretch it out, cycle it, bounce it, that sort of thing. So if I move this back to frame 1 now, let's just frame this up, I'm also going to load in the up. So when I go back to frame 1 here, think about what's about to happen. it goes in a diagonal direction. You notice it's not quite fully diagonal because I have inside the right clip, if I go to the animation editor, it's not a linear, it's actually speeding up and slowing down. If I just make this linear, we'll get an absolute diagonal. Another thing to notice is that the actual final value is in fact 5 by 5, where in fact we keyframed at 10 and 10. Well, why is this? Two reasons. When we keyframed, I actually keyframed the kinematic local position, not specifically X or Y. It was all of them together. So when we come to do the mixer, it is in fact, if I go to the mixer properties, there we go, it's normalizing or averaging. So it takes the value inside this clip 
and inside this clip and then divides by the number of clips in this case it's 2 so that's why it was 10 and 10 and we end up with 5 and 5 we can make this additive by simply taking this off so now we actually have our 10 and our 10 the other way to do this was in fact to keyframe the specific parameters themselves if I were to have this back being averaged or normalized I can go inside the clip properties and this is the right clip therefore I can deactivate the position and Y the position in Z if I go into the up clip and look at the clip properties as well I can deactivate the X and the Z so now we have the position in Y and the position in X only now because they are completely different parameters they are no longer being mixed or normalized so it's only taking the parameters inside the clip and blending them in this case we have the X parameter and the Y parameter so you notice now if I start to change the influence of one clip over the other absolutely nothing happens if I go back to the clip properties and turn these back on so I select this now I can change the influence so if we go to the very end frame just like in editing it's pulling in the next frame in which case there is no next frame so there is nothing no value for it to blend against so I'm going to go back one frame so you notice now the box is in fact at 10 in X because right now the right clip has 100% influence and the up clip has 0% influence again this is being normalized so as I put this to 100% as well it goes back to the 5 and 5 so I can keyframe all of this over time so if I wanted it to go up here maybe go up and then right I would go to the beginning and remove the influence from the right and set a keyframe in this case on both of them maybe at frame 5 I'm happy and then frame 6 let's go to the end frame in fact and let's swap them over so now as you can see from the beginning it's going to go up 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 and now I'm swapping the influence and it's going to go back down to the right I could also do if I click on this I'm actually setting a key if I right click on it I can open up the animation editor so we can also see in addition to the clip itself we can keyframe the weight so now I've removed the key so there we go the up clip is always contributing let's go to the end like so so now let's see how we can control the data so having the ability to combine the animation inside of clips means I can change the data very easily afterwards with the influence of another clip. I can also offset it in time much more easily as well.